basically. Beast Ball! It's coming to you soon! What's going on, Brews? Welcome to essentially part two. Last video was sealed booster boxes. This video is the raw Sword and Shield cards. Lots of stuff in Sword and Shield is absolutely exploding right now. This year, this whole year, we've all been waiting for Sword and Shield to explode, have we not? Yes, we have. Well, it's 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 upon us. It's game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? This season, as the temperature heats up, Sword and Shield prices to the moon. So this video, we're gonna look at eight cards specifically, all except for one, or Sword and Shield ult arts, but eight cards, okay? Stick to the end, I'm going to tell you, there's, there's some stuff I wanna talk to you guys about. I wanna have a little heart to heart with you guys about all this pump stuff that's been going on. 2024 is definitely the year of the pump. A little mini 2019, a little mini COVID thing going on. Uh, the newest set, Temporal Forces, has been out two weeks and it already has cycled through four different chase cards. That never happens. That's how much pumping is becoming a part of the, the 2024 vibe, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that at the end. I'm also gonna give you one really sick ass, amazing, bold, not so bold prediction at the end of this video. So stick to the end. Hear my cool little prediction, and then let's have a little heart-to-heart -heart about pumpers, okay? Because pumpers are not good at all. They don't they do not do things that actually stick around and last and make a difference. It's all a bunch of BS. Alexa, music off! Alright, guys, real quick. I'm in the middle of editing this video. I'm almost done, and I just listened to all the crap that I say at the end of this video. If you don't know who I am, it doesn't matter. Just please, for the love of God, stick to the end of this video and listen to what I have to say about all the recent pumping that has been going on in the Pokemon TCG community. I think I have some really good points, some really good insight about things like Ghastly and Morty's Conviction and all this crap that's getting pumped right now. So please, just stick to the end of the video or fast forward to the end and just listen to what I have to say about all this ridiculous pumping that is going on. Alright, back to the video. All right. So, let's talk about... <sighs> Had to rebalance myself here. Sword and Shield Altarts that are exploding in value right now. Alright guys, let's go ahead and check it out. Like I said, eight, eight total cards. I'm just going to start with the cheapest and work my way up to Moonbryon, okay? We already know Moonbryon is the most expensive, but we still need to talk about how how much more in all these charts that you're about to look at here guys I could have just I could have just switched these charts out with each other and you wouldn't even notice because every single one of these charts we're about to look at is like <gasps> seriously every chart is just a to the moon chart which is why I'm making this video it's to the moon charts get people excited oh yeah so here we are at the cheapest card on the list of the eight cards and the only one that is not an alt art it is a absolutely exquisitely beautiful, perfectly crafted Rayquaza B Max Secret Rare from Evolving Skies. Now here's how here's how the little the price points are gonna go, guys. One one. I'm gonna tell you the price on January first, and then four twelve. That's the day of me recording this. I'm gonna tell you the price on TCG Player for that card, the market value, and then you see near mint under that. All that means is. Look, there's market value and then there's near mint price. The cheaper the card, the closer the two correlate. The more expensive or desirable a card, the more they don't they don't correlate. So just because a card's market value is blank doesn't mean you can necessarily get a near mint copy for that same amount of money. So I looked up if today, tomorrow, right now, you wanted to buy these cards on TCG Player, I wrote the exact cheapest near mint copy you can buy on TCG Player. All right, anyway, Rayquaza VMAX Secret Rare was $27 on January 1st. It is now $40 and rising. As you can clearly see, every card on this list is rising, which is why it's on this list, which is why it's exploding. Okay, so here we go, next card. So this, holy crap, Card number two on this list is already the single most impressive card we are going to look at. Umbreon V. Look at how much all of this. Okay, 1-1 one, one on January 1st, $91. $91. Today, basically a week ago, this was $91. Okay, now here we are, April 12th. It is $171 and this near mint copy will set you back. 
$175. This card has essentially doubled in price just in the last month, okay? And yes, this is product of what looks like buyout activity, but at the same time, for the last two years, I've always wondered how this wasn't a $100 card. So maybe it's a buyout, maybe it's a little manipulation, Maybe it's Pokereb opening his big mouth saying he loved it more than the VMAX version. I don't know. All I know is, I always knew this car was going to explode. I just didn't expect it to explode so acutely and abruptly and ridiculously. Oh my god. Alright, let's get the next card. But yeah, this is a $90 card that's almost $200. Someone bought this card for $240 yesterday. $239.95. I saw. I looked. Alright, next, Leafy on VMAX. Even with a uh, uh, chart that looks like that, this is the least impressive card on the entire list. January 1st, 160, now it's like 195. But I, here's the thing, 160 to 195, great. There was multiple copies available in Near Mint uh, for $175. So I'm not very impressed with this. Um, it's always been expensive, it's still expensive. You know, it is what it is. But uh, this list is about exceptionally impressive rises in value. Okay, so Blaziken VMAX, the bane of Cool Trainer Ryan's existence. I think it took him, what, 38 booster boxes to pull this thing? So on January 1st, it was $164. Today, $208 near, or, you know, market value. But your near mint, your cheapest near mint available on TCG Player is a $230. All right, let's get to the next one. I want to hurry up through this list because I just want to talk to you guys for a second. All right, Gengar VMAX Altart from Fusion Strike. So, one one $208 on January 1st. On April 12th, this is $283 market value now. That, that's a lot more. It's like $83 more. No, that's not. That's that's $75 more. I'm an idiot. Uh, near Mint, though, is 300 Okay, this is the crazy part. This graph, they didn't make the graph big enough or tall enough. That thing is to this minute just shooting up. Your nearest Mint available is $390. That is the single biggest discrepancy for market value in Near Mint of all these cards by far. That means Gengar is still... By the way, hold on, let me stop real quick. Look at above Gengar's head. What do you see? You see a moon. Okay, I'm just saying. There's Moon Brion. Little Moongar. Little Moongar. Moongar. Gen Moon? No, that doesn't work. All right, let's just hurry up and get to the next one. Oh yeah, Giratina V from the LO, the Lost Origin. So this card is one of the few cards that has just been steadily, healthily, just doop 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 all year long. All these other cards, it's like just in the last months, they, they went crazy. But this card, just all year long, has been doop 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 doing its thing. Stairway to heaven, basically. All right, so Giratina, V, Alt Art, hate it or love it. It is a, a near mint copy. It's gonna run you about $300. So what was it, 240 on January 1st. Now, okay, so, I mean, we got a six, $60, that's not too bad. All right, Rayquaza, VMAX Altart. On January 1st, you're talking $240. Today, you're talking market value, $308. Near Mint, 300. I found a bunch of copies for 300. So I don't be too worried about this right now. It's been expensive for a long time and it hasn't really gone too, it has its ups and downs. Like this card just never goes down too far, or never goes up too far. It stays very well priced, basically the whole time it's been it's been out. All right, now here we are. Here we are. Okay, so Umbreon VMAX, Umbreon VMAX Altar on January 1st was $540. Today its market value is $700, and a near mint copy is $750, and then $775, and then $780, and then it shoots all the way up to $850. Okay. So, there you go. So there's eight cards, seven of which were alt arts, one seeker rare, that just honestly, other than Giratina V, just in the last two weeks, three weeks, have really just absolutely started to like, really lay it down. Like, we're talking to the moon on a lot of these. Okay, so, yeah. Oh my God. 
All right, so there's two things I want to tell you guys about. One thing I wanted to give you a, a little prediction, okay? Prediction. Gengar VMAX. Gengar VMAX from Fusion Strike. One year from today, I think, will be the undisputed, hands down, just not even close, second most expensive card from the Sword and Shield era. Okay? Ooh, big, big whatever. What I'm saying is, I think a year from today, Gengar VMAX from Fusion Strike will be a $500 card. I think we all know we got we got Moonbreon way up here, and then it's been like Rayquaza and Gengar kind of way, way, way down below. Uh, what I'm saying is, I have seen a million Moonbreons, and I've seen a million of these Gengars. Every time I see the Gengar, my jaw drops to the floor. The Moonbreon, I'm like, meh, meh. Are you serious? So I'm just saying, like, the Gengar is visually stunning. It is, Fusion Strike is going up is going up mm -hmm. just go watch my last video i'll link it at the end but five hundred dollars as a firm hundred percent number two chase card from the sword and shield era known for alt arts i i think it's absolutely safe to say gengar is a 500 plus dollar card i think it's going to be umbreon at 900 dollars here soon gengar at 500 or quasi at 350 maybe 400 and then blaze again and move, move it on down anyway okay so that's just my fun just for funsy my my prediction but here's what i want to talk about i want to talk about pumping all the crazy pumping that's going on just in the last few weeks um from whether you're talking about this umbreon v that is just exploding unnaturally just all because of poker f it's all poker f's fault um but Pumping, people are starting to figure out that they can control markets a lot easier than they thought. Just by natural whatever, you might think you can't really affect the market that much unless you have a ton of money. But here's the problem, and here's why I wanted to bring this up. And let's use Temporal Forces as a perfect example. Temporal, temporal Forces has been out, what, like two weeks, three weeks? Iron Leaves was the chase card. And then Iron Crown was the chase card. And then for one afternoon, Ghastly was the chase card. And now Morty's Conviction is the chase card. All four of these are subject and because of buyouts, because TCG player buyouts, okay? And I want you to go look at Iron Crown now versus a week ago. Look at Ghastly now versus a week ago. Look at Morty's Conviction next week versus what it is today. These buyouts, are very acute and usually don't last very long at all. All it is is people get on TCG Player and they look for semi-popular cards that don't have a large amount of listings available. They buy them all up and then naturally they get relisted for a higher price. The problem with this and why it works so well is because the entire Pokemon community leans way too heavily on TCG Player for all their market price data. If it sells out on TCG Player, it unnaturally sends a ripple effect throughout the Pokemon community that is completely unrealistic, unnatural, and that is why a week or two or three weeks or a month later, that price that got pumped always goes back down to what it was, okay? So all I'm saying is, people finally found out that they can make very small, but very impactful changes in market value on certain cards just by buying them out on TCG Player. Why? Because we, you, me, we all rely way too heavily on TCG Player for our market data, so a lot of people are having fun right now buying out cards on TCG Player, making headlines, just doing things, whatever. Like, this is temporary. And any time you see a card that looks like it's getting pumped, bought out, and naturally shooting up, just stay away. Just forget about it. Don't even look at that card for a week or two, or a month at most, okay? Because when you look, check back in a couple weeks later, the card is going to be like it never even got pumped to begin with, okay? Now, that might not be the case for Umbreon V, because that card should be worth more than it is. But all these Temporal Forces cards, no, okay? No. All right, no. No, 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 no. All right, guys. That's all I got. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Deuces!